All right, it's going to continue with the UEFI development here. Uh, instead of doing loading files and, and reading them just yet, I'm actually going to make a timer as sort of an intro to making UEFI events. And if you wanted to know how to get the current date time and print the, the current date time, I'm going to do that with a periodic timer with a, say, one second cadence. So every one second, I'm going to print whatever the current time is and the date on the screen. So that'll give a sort of intro to getting events, which is an important part of UEFI. And I had somebody ask me if I could make a timer in general. So I don't know if it'll work for them, but this is how I'll go ahead and do it. Cause it's a little, maybe a little odd how you, how you set the flags and things for that. So how do we actually make a timer? Uh, I'm going to go with AFI boot services, create events. So you can create different types of events that the firmware is going to run. They have different priority levels or task priority levels, which is what, which is what the TPL is. Um, an event being just some, it's a void pointer. <laughs> so an, an event is a void pointer. It just, it doesn't really have any inherent meaning, but the, the spec in your firmware may give it some meaning internally, but, uh, that's just, you know, some opaque reference to something that you can call upon later when needed. So you can signal an event at a certain priority level, and that will result in some code being run somewhere corresponding to that event. So we can create an event that says, okay, I want to make a timer specifically. They have a type of event for timers that can run either in the future by a certain amount of time, say like 10 seconds from now, or you can have it run every so often recurring, such as once a second, which is what I'm going to do. Or you can have once every five seconds. So for example, I'm running the i3 window manager. My date time in the lower right corner updates every five seconds by default. So we could write a similar thing here, but that's just as an example. Uh, the different types that we have, we have runtime events, we have notify wait. So if an event is not signaled, then the notification function will be queued. Okay, notify signal is queued. Signal exit boot services is a specific type, or when your virtual address is changed, that's a type as well. So to make a timer specifically for this video, I'm going to set the time I'm going to set the event to be a type of timer. And since we can bitwise or these things, I'm going to or it with notify wait. Or sorry, I'm going to or it with notify signal so that when the time comes up to run this event, it, the firmware will signal the event thereby calling it in effect. It'll run it. So, but these things are put onto a queue according to their task priority level. And there's a few different ones here. I believe raise priority gives a better definition of those raise TPL rather. So that at least defines the priority levels. I'm going to add these to the, the EFI header in a second, just trying to go back over this. So I understand it better, <laughs> but a TPL is just a number, a task priority level corresponding to one of these four things. So the application level is what usually things run at for, in my, in my case, my, oh, my EFI application, that could be most things run at the application level, presumably, uh, for a timer specifically, I'm going to set it as callback because I've found setting the timer events and the function to call at the application level does not work. Or if it does, it never gets called. It's interrupted or it's too async and it never happens. But if I want something to be called mostly consistently at any given time interval, I found that using callback works a little bit better. It's possible that notify would work as well, but I found that callback is the lowest level that works for me uh, consistently. So that's what I'll be going with. I think it makes more sense for a timer event as well, because we have a set timer function for EFI boot services where you give it an event after you create the event, you give it a delay and a time. But if we go to create the event, which is above check, and we can close it. <laughs> I forgot it was all the way up here. Not the extended version, but the regular one. If we go up here, what we're essentially doing is saying we have a type of event that we're going to make. We have a specific level we want the event to be called at. We have a, an optional function that can be called for this event. And we have a context we can pass to that function. So if I make a timer event, I can pass some arbitrary amount of data to it and it will happen and be called every so often. I'm going to set it up as a callback so that when the time comes to call it, the firmware will signal the event and it will be called with the given context that we send to it. So a context in this case is just any amount of data you want to send. You just send it a pointer to that data. 
So if I want to print the date and time on the screen, say in the, in the lower corner or in an upper corner in the middle or whatever, as a context, I'm going to pass in just say a struct with values for the current text screens, rows and columns. So I know the boundaries of the screen and I can determine from there where to print the date time text. So that's what I'll be using that context for. If this is called correctly and you want to create an event, it should pass back an event that is created. Or you can pass in the address of a void pointer for the event and it should fill that out. So we'll see. We'll see how that happens. If I can move this window and remember my keybinds, we'll get on it. Get on with it. So I'll make something here. This is part of the boot services, so I'll fill that out in the boot boot services table, which create event is probably going to be not that, but this one, event and timer services. So we'll say EFI create event. I had wait for event before, so I'll put it above there. I'll just put it right here. And this would be in 711. I'm just going to take that, put it there. Um, and again, we have types of events, including its mode and attributes. We have the priority level, a function to call for the event, context we can pass to that function for the event, and the event itself if it's created. So the event is a void pointer, which I should already have from before because I've needed it for separate things. Yeah, so I already have the event defined. The event types I will define. I'll just grab those, put them underneath. I guess they put it underneath, but doesn't matter too much. I'm going to put EFI event types, and they can be ORed together as needed. So for example, timer might be ORed with notify wait or notify signal. I'm going to do it with notify signal so that the firmware sort of signals my timer function to be called whenever the time comes up to run the timer itself. I'm going to say specifically, hey, you can signal this thing so that you run it as soon as you're able to as part of whatever queue it is. And the queue is according to whatever priority level it is or the, the TPL and you if I speak. So for this function, I'll pass in, you know, the top bit here, eight set and all the others, and then I'll or it with signal. So we should have, should effectively be that at the end. And I'll just rearrange these things just cause I like putting a comma at the end for that. But this is fairly straightforward. Again, it's just defining APIs and you know, calling said APIs. So I will do that as we go along here. So my timer event for the timer that's going to print on the screen, I'm just going to have that set up within my main function here. And I'm going to do that before I hit my input loop. And as context to this, I want to know where in the screen I can draw, just as an example of sending context to an event function. So I'm going to do that after I get the boundary for the screen which is right, which is right here, getting the columns and rows for our, my current text mode. I'll do it after there. So I'm going to create a timer events. Let's say to print date time on screen every one second, approximately. It should pretty much be every second, but code is usually approximate when it's at runtime. I'm not in a real time operating system after all. So it's defined within boot services. We'll have create event. And that is given a type, so I'm going to give it the event timer type ORed with event notify signal. Then we have the notify TPL. I don't think I define the TPL types, so let me do that as well. Go to raise. I won't call raise TPL, but I will get the task priority levels here. I'll put it above here, I guess, or after. And we'll do it after. So I'll do EFI TPL levels, task priority levels. So applications, the lowest, and they go in order. And generally the higher levels can, well, they won't, it's not can, they will sort of overwrite the lower levels uh, in priority, right? So the highest level is going to run before all the other ones. 
So it will interrupt the lower levels as well, I believe. Even if they're all sort of asynchronous. And if this doesn't make sense, just having them be, you know, random numbers here, they do this according to, I'm sure, the bits that are set. So that'd be 8 and 16, or if we did um, 2 bytes, we can just lay that out here, lay that out to make a little bit more sense. That would be a 1 there, and 31 would be just, you know, all 1s below that with that bit set. The highest level, I guess this is sort of a 5-bit TPL level, that's the implementation, and just all the bits are set for the highest, for that priority, so you could check against, I guess if you had a bit field, negative 1 in a 5-bit field, but I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyway, let's, <laughs> I'll go back and lay that out here. So the TPL level, I'm going to say, is going to be a callback, so we're making a callback function. Whether it actually functions that way within firmware, I don't know, but I figure that makes more sense we tell it, hey, this is going to be a callback function that I'm using. And that does seem to work better in my code as well, if I set it to be a callback level function. So no, the notify function itself is a specific type, EFI event notify. Well, let's just say we have a function here called print date time, and I'll set up that in a second. The context, we need context as well. It can be any sort of data you want. It's optional, as well as the function. So let's say... Timer context will be the text mode screen bounds. We'll just say that. So I'll just have a struct here, which I'll probably also define in the function that's going to be called so it has access to it. But we'll have a struct here. I'll call it timer context. And I'm just going to make it the same as this, the rows and columns values. I'll make them uint32. Why not? So we'll have rows and columns. Or I'll do it like this. And then I need to instantiate that. That's just a type. So I'll set it context. And we'll just have it be nothing. If this has to be at compile time, I think I probably have to do it like this. Otherwise, the values may not be set. So we'll just do it like this. A little more verbose, but that's fine. So context, we give a void pointer. So we can say void pointer cast the address of context. That way we'll have access to that within the function that is going to be called later for this event. And then we also need an event that's taken out of this. So we'll say we have an event. We'll call it, we'll call it a timer event. And we can give a address to that as well. An event's a void pointer. So a pointer to a void pointer would be, yeah, taking the address of that. Assuming that worked, but assuming that worked, we'll have a timer event we can use and a function we can call in context we can send to it. But that does not set up the timer itself. That makes an event that can be set for a timer. So there is another function called setTimer that we have to use also, specifically for a timer. So I will do that as well. What did I need to set up? Event notify. I think that's under here. Yeah, right here. And I need to put it before the event function so that it knows what it is. That doesn't have a specific section number. We'll just associate it with that. But all this takes in is a an event. If you want to do something with it, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything with it, but that's how the function is defined. An event in the context. We will be using the context. I will not be using the event, but it'll have to be passed to the function regardless. And that's okay. And you can use this for all the other events in UEFI as well. Like a keyboard event, we could pass in wait for key as the event that we set up a timer for. So if you wanted something like maybe a microcontroller checks every so often for an input event on a serial line or something, you could probably set up an event to run every, I don't know, 30 milliseconds or something, and you'd pass it context if data was filled out on that line and that function could do stuff with it, print to the screen or go elsewhere. That could be an example. Kind of reaching here, I'm not really sure. But that's just, this event doesn't have to be some custom thing that you make. It can be any UEFI event, really. Um, and also, before I forget, just to 
sort of shut down what we set up, I'll also add close event. So we can make an event and I'll also close it before everything leaves just for proper cleanup. Might not need to do that, but it might be good practice to do so. So might as well set that up. We'll just put it there, copy and paste, and always faster. That's pretty simple. Just takes an, ev an event to close. So it removes references, removes it from an event group to where it belongs, and closes it. I'm not going to be using register protocol notify, but it would also close the registration. It's safe to call it within the notify function. Okay. You can also call signal event if you want to set up something to run, say, if you have a periodic event every 10 minutes, but something happens before that 10 minutes is up, you can manually call it another code by signaling the event, depending on its priority level, of course, and some other factors. You can signal an event to call it manually, and then close it when you're done working with it. So I'll set these things up. Now, close events, I did not add to boot services, so I would get an error trying to call it, hopefully. And there we go. So I'll put that in there just so it's fully defined. Set timer, I'm going to add as well. And that should be everything I need, at least for these events. I'm not going to be messing with the TPL levels. And I shouldn't need anything else. I could disable the watchdog timer. Maybe I'll do that afterwards, because that's pretty short. But I'll set these up first. So let me go to set timer just to make sure that that's defined as well. I'll put that after create event. So that is 717. And what this will do, we'll set up a timer. <laughs> so we can set up an event for a timer, but that does not call the timer itself. It doesn't call the function associated for that timer event unless you actually set the timer, set it up itself explicitly, which is what this will be doing. So we have an event. In my case, that's going to be the timer event. That's just this random thing that should be returned from creating the timer event here. Yeah, from creating the timer event here. Go back to where I was. So we have a delay type, which is the type, see timer delay type. So that's timer delay. And EFI timer delay, so that has to be defined first. That should just be this enum. Okay, so we have cancel, periodic, and relative. So the types of timers we can make specifically for this, for the set timer, is we can cancel the current timer, we can set up something to run every so often, repeatedly, which is periodic, and we can set it up to run some amount of time in the future, which is relative to the current time, current being when you call the set timer function if that makes sense. So you can trigger periodically at trigger time intervals from the current time for periodic or just once as a sort of one shot or a relative time. And the time that you set, the trigger time, is going to be in 100 nanosecond units. So for me, I want to set up a one second timer. One nanosecond is one billion compared to one second. There's a, there should be a billion or one e to the nine nanoseconds in one full whole second. So if this is in 100 nanosecond units, it would be a billion divided by 100, or 10 million. Because times 10 is 100 million, times 10 is a billion. Yeah, that should be right. So we can set that up. So we created the timer events. Let's set timer for the timer event. So the event would be timer event. And the type will be timer periodic for around every one second in 100 nanosecond units. And that would be one in nine zeros divided by 100, or we can just cut off two of those zeros, you know, so that's fine. Okay, so what else needs to be done? That will set up a timer event. That event corresponds to a function which is not made yet, and it'll pass in context which is made, and it'll call that every one second because that's how this is set up. And we shouldn't have to do anything else because the way my menu works is if the user changes the text mode, it'll return and redraw. It'll go back up here to the beginning of this loop. 
it'll redraw the menu, it'll have new columns and rows values, and the next time it calls the timer event, it'll have an updated context, so that should move the text on the screen where we print it. So that should all be okay. And I did set up the events notify type for the function. So we can either type def our own function as that, or we can just make the function signature the same as that function. So this EFI event notify here, for the notify function, that's going to be called, which is down here, just takes in an event in the context. You can either type def this, uh, well, it is type def, but you can, you can define a function as this, or you can just make a function with a different name that has a similar signature to that. So that's what I'm going to do. Say timer function to print date time, current date time, every one second. We'll just say that. So that is defined as void EFI API, and we can call it whatever. I called it print date time, and it takes in EFI event event and void context. So if we have it use the same signature, then the compiler will say, okay, the types match for these things, so I'll be able to call it correctly. So that's what I'll do for that. So what are we actually going to do? Banish that to the Shadow Realm. How am I going to do this stuff? I'm going to get the context first, just to ensure that I do have it. And I'm not going to be using the event, so really I can just cast that to void and we won't have to worry about it. Otherwise, we'll get a warning. At least on um, on Pedantic. So just suppress a warning for that. This is going to be my context that I'm going to use. And that I'm going to use to determine where to draw on the screen the current date time. I do need to define another function to get the date time, but I'll set up the logic here first. So my timer context is going to be the passed in context, which could be anything. Just in this case, I'm defining it as this struct. And that will be the data at a timer context amount of memory. So I'll have that be a pointer to our passed in context. So the void pointer I'm casting to a struct pointer, and then I'm getting the data corresponding to the size of that struct. So that way this is filled out with the current rows and columns on our screen. So what I can do is save our current cursor position because I'm going to be moving it to draw the text on the screen. And then I'll restore it later. So it doesn't move when we go back and, you know, draw other things. Because this will be sort of, not necessarily blocking, but maybe preempting some other things. So I'm going to save and restore the cursor data, because something else, another interrupt, another anything could be going on when this event is fired off and the date time is being printed. So I, I want to make sure other things aren't messed up as possible. And the cursor position being one of those, maybe you'll have text going wildly out of whack unless, you know, we make sure it's it's in order here. So how do I know where it's at? We can get the current cursor column and row from the current text mode cursor struct, I believe. So I'll be I'll be doing that. So I'll say save column and save row. And that can be C out and be mode. And I believe it's cursor cursor column and row. Yep. So C out mode cursor column, C out mode cursor row. And then we can restore those later. So I'm going to save that and then I'm going to move to where we want to print. I'll say lower right corner. That's where I usually have my clocks on my operating systems. So this context will tell me how big the screen is. So I can use that to position the cursor with set cursor position, given just C out and a column and a row value. So I'll set it to however big the text we're going to print, and then I want to, off I want to offset that to the left so it prints up until that boundary. Uh, and from testing, it, sh it should have been, I think, around 19 characters. I'm going to make it 20 just to have an extra space, because if we print the full... If we move 20 back from the right side of the screen and we print 20, then that'll go down a line because that equals the end of the line. And I don't want to do that. So I'll just make sure this is at least one character extra than what I'm going to be printing left to right. 
So let's say columns minus 20 here. And rows is going to be the total rows on the screen. If it's 80 by 25, it, it would be zero based. So we want to do minus one for the last row on the screen. Um, row 24, corresponding to visual row 25. So I'll do that. And then we'll, you know, print date, time, text. So I need to figure out how to do that. And to restore the position, I can just restore to wherever we were when we got these values before we moved and printed. So that'd be save column and save row. That should restore it. So how do I print date time? I'm going to have to get the time somehow. And there is a function named just that. Well, without the somehow, <laughs> but there is, there is a get time function. It is in, get that copy off the screen. It is in runtime services instead, which is right below at eight. So this would be in my cursor wasn't down there. It would be under time services here, get time. We can also set the time, but I haven't messed with that yet. And this also, I'm pretty sure this assumes and runs off the real time clock. So if you have a battery backed, like a CMOS battery and that's dead in your machine, this might not be <laughs> sort of something you can use. I mean, set time, maybe. It depends if it keeps everything in memory or not. I guess NVVARs may be kept in memory on boot, so maybe that would work from that point on, but I'm really not sure. I think the CMOS needs the battery back to keep a consistent time. Uh, but regardless, we'll have a function for this. I'll move that back over. That's at 831. This is going to be within runtime services, so I'll go to the bottom and forget where I put it. Get time. There we go. My runtime services table. The annoying thing here is that I don't remember if they have it in the HTML spec or not, but this one, they define things differently for some of these runtime services, maybe all of them. They don't define them as the, you know, the all caps names, but they do within the runtime services table from the system table, like earlier in the spec, I think they still, they still define it that way. So if I look at the runtime services table here, they define EFI get time as the type. However, if you go to where that is in the spec, they don't define it as that. So keep that in mind. The spec's not really consistent. You'll have to remember that, which is quite annoying, but that's okay. So I'll just go up and we'll, I'll have it uh, wherever the bottom of the stuff is above the table. I'll just put it up here. If I get time, which is in section 831, that's fine. Make sure that's copied. So EFI status, and this is the same as the other EFI functions. So you can type def at the same, which would be EFI API star EFI get time. And then that would make sure that, hey, it actually works because it's defined consistently with everything else. So I'm not sure why the spec did that or why the spec writers did that, but I digress and complain too much. So we'll have an EFI time struct as well. So I should put that above here. And it will have date time values we can use. So isn't that nice? Just grab all of that. Put it after there. Okay, we also have capabilities. Capabilities will determine sort of the resolution of the clock that is being kept. I just need to make sure I have my, my lines lined up correctly. There we go. Okay, so we're given a year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and a nanosecond, and the time zone. I'm not going to mess with the time zone. You can mess with that if you want. And daylight savings time, which we should have legislated away by now, but we haven't. And that has nothing to do with this video, so... Let's all just lose sleep once a year and feel better once a year. Yeah, that won't cause any issues. But ultimately, that's okay. We can print these things out. And we'll be hunky-dory. So, what else do we have? Bit definitions for daylight and time zone. I'll grab those as well. C 
see below. I'll just remove that text. Since it is a struct, they, they defined it as a struct dot struct member. So I thought that was, that's a nice touch, you know. It's a nice little touch there. So the format of the time is hour, hour, colon, minute, minute, colon, second, second, dot, nanoseconds, which is nine. Yeah, because one nanosecond is one billionth of a second. That makes sense. Battery-backed real-time clock device maintains the date and time. So you will need a functioning CMOS battery for this to work. Little CR32 or what have you. The time zone is minutes from UTC. So for example, I'm in central time right now. I'm six hours behind from daylight savings time. So mine would be minus probably 360, right? Because this is in minutes. Yeah, mine would probably be 360, not 480 for eight hours. That's going off Pacific. We have a bit mass for daylight savings time. I'm not going to worry about this because I do not care. But what that would do is, I suppose, change the minute values from UTC by an hour's time, depending on the time of the year, which does make sense. If time is effect, if time is affected but has not been adjusted, use the new calculation. Okay, so you may have to calculate things on your own. Um. We'll see how things go. <laughs> I'm not. I'm gonna try to not worry about it just for a basic timer here. So this would be EFI time capabilities. And this determines how accurate your clock is and to what position is it accurate. And is it cleared out when you set the time? I'm not gonna set the time or worry about that. But the resolution is the resolution in counts per second. So counts per second, e.g. 1 hertz equals 1. That's 1 per second. So the regular CMOS RTC, if it's set at a, a default rate of 1024 hertz, which the old CMOS was, if you programmed for it, data port 70 and all that, uh, that could be set to... A, a clock rate of 1024 hertz, so that's probably what this corresponds to roughly, to run every one second. As an abstraction over that, the accuracy is in parts per million, not per billion, so this is only, what, microseconds, not nanoseconds. So this is an error rate of parts per million. So if you have the value of 50 million, it would have an accuracy of 50 parts per million. 1 e to negative 6 and sets to 0 true equals time set clears clears the time below the resolution reporting level okay below the resolution level so i suppose if we have a clock if we have a clock that's accurate to 1 hertz or the resolution, sorry, not accurate. If we have a clock that's resolution is one hertz for one per second, then anything in the nanosecond value of the time would be cleared if sets to zero is true. But normal things set it to false, so it probably won't. I'm not gonna worry about set time, so I won't mess with that, but that is all we need to get the current time. And since this is optional, I'm not gonna worry about that either. <laughs> since I set the timer to run every one second, I don't care what the resolution is, as long as it is at or below one second. And usually this is. So I suppose I could have code to check if the resolution is less than and not do that, but I didn't think about that. Hmm. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> I know this will be part of runtime services though, so we can call get time. And we'll have to get the current time. How did I do that again? We just pass it in. A pointer to time and a pointer to capabilities. Okay. So let's see. EFI time. We'll say time. That's fine. And I'll pass a pointer to that. We can set up capabilities, I suppose. I haven't checked this before, so that sounds interesting. Although I don't want to check it like every so often and do a comparison here. But I'll leave that. If you want to check that on your own, we can we can check that. So we'll get the current date time. We move the text. Let me do this after. 
we move the cursor to print. I'll call this get current date time, move the cursor to print, print date time. And then we'll move it back. So how am I going to print the current date time? We'll say we print the current year, dash the current month, dash the current day. I'll have a space, we'll have the current hour, colon, current minute, colon, current second. I'm not going to worry about nanoseconds. I'm just going to do a one second resolution time here. And if we say four digit year, two, digit, two digits, month, day, hour, minute, second, then this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 total characters in length. So going by going back by 20 should be okay. It should leave a one character buffer so we don't print sort of down a line at the end. Because I don't want to do that. I'll just overwrite this position every time the time is drawn. So what would the parms for that be? Assuming get time worked, we'll have time over here. We can do time.year, and these are capitalized. Time.year, time.month, time.day, time.hour, time.minute, and time.second. And we can see if that works. Uh, at the moment, it won't, even if there aren't compile errors, which there are. I've seen argument one from incompatible type. I put the U on the wrong side of the string. That would make a lot of sense. Expected that before, that's 985. Mm, yep, need a, need a comma, not a semicolon, that's true. There we go. So nothing is going to print out, except I lied. We actually have stuff printing out. I forgot if I set the RTC in QEMU or not. You'll see here that values below 10 are cut off because I'm not using a length specifier in printf. I don't have code to recognize that, but it does count up at a rate of pretty much one second per second. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Yeah, so that seems to be pretty accurate. And we draw it in the lower right screen and everything's actually pretty good. If I set a different text mode, say mode two, it does take a second because it takes one second before the event and the function is called again. But then it does redraw it. So there is a lag time of one second. You could get around that by printing immediately after calling the function even immediately after you change the text mode. I'm not doing that, of course. But that would be one way of making that slightly better so you don't have to wait a second for the time to show up. Uh, but I am actually kind of confused because I don't remember setting up an RTC. If it works by default, that's fine. I'm happy for that. <laughs> but to be explicit, I'm going to set the RTC flag within QEMU here. And I'm going to set the base to be my local time, which is 8.30 p.m., 20.30 p.m. And there's a few different flags for that. You can set... UTC, or I think one other one, and there's other things. You can set a, a clock value, I think, to be host, but I think with USB, I got an error. It said the bus was already taken, and I'd have to set up something else for that, but just setting the RTC arm here does work, so that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, it, can, it continues to print over there in the corner. Now it's at my local time. Aha. Uh -huh. So before it wasn't quite at my local time, now it's at my local time. Okay, but to also get around that issue where it only prints one digit, even though I want to print sort of a zero in front of it, maybe you don't, but I do, I can get around that. I don't remember if I have character printing within printf though, or eprintf. I probably don't. I have string digit, well, integer digit, unsigned int, boolean, octal, hex. I do not have just a regular character, so let me do that. That's pretty easy. If I give that a character 16c, we can do that. I don't know why the, uh, the indentation's kind of freaking out here, but that's all right. <laughs> if I give it a c, I can do stuff similar to the string. So I'll just do that here. I'll just say print character 16, I'll say value. Printing a character. Although I will get an I will get a warning or an error here because VARG needs this to be, I think, at least an integer size of data, or maybe at least a short size of data. Although this this is a short size, but I think it needs an integer. We'll see. So we'll just say character here, although I already set up a character string for printing. 
which I'm using down here, so I'll just copy this, actually. I'll copy that code, which is just going to be setting the first value there equal to the character, and then we'll print that value as a string, because the second u16 will be a null, so it's a string of one character, and it'll print out that single character. So, I will do that, but I should get a warning at least here. Short unsigned int is promoted to int when passed through variable args. So you should pass int not char 16, and that's what I'll do. If this code is reached, the program will abort. How wonderful. So let's just change that to an int. Compiler warning says to do this. So I'll do that, and I'm just going to copy that for the regular printf as well. So they both match. Okay, so what am I, what am I going to use this percent %c for? I'm going to do that when I'm printing the date time in order to pad on the left with a zero because I don't have a length specifier and I don't want to go through thinking about how to put a length specifier here because <laughs> I'm a lazy person. So what I'm going to do is do things the slightly worse way, maybe, and just prep into all these with a character that's either a zero or null if I want to print out and pad it with a zero on the left. So that'll be everything that isn't the year. And these lines will look like this. If the month is below 10, then I'll print out before the month value, so if it's 1 through 9, or 0 through 9, well, we won't have a 0 month. If it's 1 through 9, <laughs> then I'll pat on the left with a 0, so right now we would have 11, but if we were in September, it would be 0, 9, and not just 9. Else, I'll just print a null value, which won't print anything. And I can just do that inline like here. Uh, after this, I do want to print the value itself. Otherwise, we'll just print a zero or nothing and then go on. I want to print the value itself prepended with a zero. So we can do that. Okay. Your month day will have hour, minutes, and seconds. Time dot hour. Time dot minutes and time dot seconds. That will end the function. Let's just line this up so I can read it at a fraction of a second faster. Okay. So that should be all we need here. Calculate that again. And that should show up in the bottom. So we can see it now as the minute turns. Hey, we have two zeros there. And then zero one, zero two, zero three for the second counter. And there we go. If I didn't have that code in, it would just print, you know, six, seven, eight without the zero there. And that is how you print a basic timer, a basic one second timer for the current date time. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I was planning on this being a, a slightly shorter video, hopefully under an hour. So I'll try for that. And I will go on to read files and maybe get the memory map and stuff. But I wanted it to be a little shorter and I had somebody ask me to make a timer. So that's why I did so. Uh, the watchdog timer is also a timer though. So before I forget, let me do that. As I'm doing my initial setup in EFI main, I'll just do it here after the text colors. So normally there's a five minute timer when you boot your machine, if it follows the UEFI spec. There's a five minute timer where if that time elapses, your machine will reboot or triple fault or just shut down. So that is the watchdog timer. And that is disabled when you exit boot services, if you want to go on to load an operating system or something. Or if you change the timer at runtime in your EFI application, it will also change that. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to disable the watchdog timer here. We need another function to do so. So I'll have to go back to the spec. And I believe that is in boot services as well. Just had to press escape a lot so that I get my actual cursor back with the keyboard. Okay, so boot services, it's not under here. It might be under miscellaneous. Yes. Okay, set watchdog timer. So the number of seconds to set it to, numeric code for a timer event. The firmware reserves all zeros to all Fs for 16-bit data. So I can just pass one above this. You could pass a zero to disable it, but I think... I don't know, just just to not step on any toes, I'll set it to a value that is outside of this range, just to make sure. And if you want to send back data when the watchdog timer relapses, you can fill out the size of that data and a string of characters to 
use for that purpose. I'm not going to use these, so I'll set a zero and a null for this, because I don't care what happens after the watchdog expires, because I'm going to disable that. But you can also set data that includes a null terminated string. You can also do this when you're exiting boot services and other areas, in case you need better logging or things, or your firmware needs it to, to handle things. But mine doesn't, so I won't worry about it. So if the timer expires, the event is logged by the firmware. It may reset with the runtime service reset system or perform a specific action that must eventually cause the platform to be reset. Okay, so it doesn't shut down, it resets. So if you've ever been stuck on like your BIOS screen when you're messing with data, maybe as part of your, uh, your motherboard settings on your desktop or something, they might handle things a little bit differently, but I know on my laptop, if I'm messing with boot settings or doing research and I keep it open in the BIOS screen, after five minutes it does reset. And that's also with my, my current EFI application. If I'm just sitting on the main screen that I set up, if I wait five minutes and don't do anything, it resets. Or even if I am doing something, just after five minutes, the PC resets. That's annoying, so we can disable that. The accuracy, the accuracy should be within plus or minus one second from the timeout. If we set it to zero, It'll disable, so that's okay. Value of zero disables the timer. So it is defined by the spec to be reset the five minutes on boot. The image may reset or disable as needed. If control is returned to the boot manager, it must be disabled. So we should disable it anyway, even if something goes wrong and we have to exit back to before our application is loaded, the firmware probably needs the timer to be disabled regardless. So this is a good thing to happen. Later on, we will be calling exit boot services to actually load and, run a, load and run a kernel or operating system. And then that also disables the timer implicitly. But I'll do it here just to make sure it is disabled at runtime. And that is fine. That is in the boot services. So that would be set watchdog timer if I set Watchdog timer. And is there a thing before? I'll just do it after close event, because that's the closest thing. That is at 751 in the spec. Copy that because I can't be can't be arsed to type it out. And I need to set up something in Vim to auto-align things, but I haven't done that yet, and that's okay. So I'm just going to copy that, go back to C, put that there, okay. So boot services, set watchdog timer, the timeout value will have zero to disable the timer. The code I'm just going to set above FFFF, so I'll just do a one and four zeros. Just increment that value. The data size, I'm not passing data, and I'm not passing a string of data. So okay. That won't cause any differences in what I'm doing. You won't see any difference, although hopefully if you wait five or more minutes, it now will no longer reset. I don't know, because I haven't messed with it yet. Oh, and I copied the stuff wrong, or else the spec had it wrong. It had a double parenthesis. Ooh, it thought it was fancy. No, get rid of that. <laughs> I haven't really waited in this QEMU window for five minutes before, so if it was resetting before after five minutes, I don't know, but... Now, hopefully it won't. All right, as a little addendum here that I might splice in before or at the end of the video, <laughs> I added a close event. You know, I, I added EFI close event, right? To close a created or an opened quote unquote event, but I'm never using it. So I actually want to use that. So things are effectively closed if they're created. So all that is is one line of code here added to, let's say, when the overall application closes. So right now, if you press the escape key from the main menu, everything shuts down. So I'm going to close the event before the machine shuts down. So all that is is calling calling BS on that, my favorite running gag. We'll call close event with the timer event that was created for the timer. I search for it. <laughs> so we made an event. It got returned from create event. So I want to pass that to close event, so we're not still trying to run the timer when we're shutting down the machine or, or elsewhere. So I'll just do that. Just a little cleanup thing, you know, a short minute or two explaining that. So everything's good now. Uh, 
I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.